Hello everyone, this is Phil, and I am here to show you how to do some basic plotting of data and continuous curves in Origin. So I'm opening up Origin right now. I have Origin 2020, and hopefully whatever version you're using uh, doesn't deviate too much from this. Um, they all look about the same. I, I just tested this on Origin 9.1 last week. All right, so let's just start. Uh, first, let's exit out of whatever I just accidentally opened. And we have our X and Y column here immediately. Uh, and all I'm gonna do is type in my data into here. So I'm gonna grab my notebook. And it's gonna be resistance, R2, because it's the second resistor in units or ohms. I'm not gonna bother with the Greek letter right now. And then we're gonna have voltage output as opposed to input drag that over so we can see it and it's in volts all right no comments no functions yet all right so the resistance starts from one and uh, increases tenfold until it reaches a million so we're gonna start with one then we're gonna do one e1 that's 10 one e2 that's 100 one e3 one e4 one e5 and one e6 is a million so we have all that already and then i'm going to manually type in my voltage value some of them are measured in millivolts and some are measured in volts. So the first four are in millivolts, so it's 0 0.1 E negative 3, uh, 1.1 E negative 3. And if it's saying 1 E negative 4 and it hasn't changed, don't worry about it. It's just what origin likes. 11.8 E negative 3, 115.9 E negative 3, and then now we're in the volts. Whoops. 5.97 and 10.9. All right. So I also want to include uh, X Y error, um, just because sometimes it's necessary. So find this uh, button because I don't I don't see where it is in the right click options. Uh, let's see, insert. That seems no. All right, and if I right click here. Do we have anything of the sort? Sort column. Just conditional formatting. Do not show this message in the future. No. All right, whatever. So look for this. Add new columns. And we're going to add two new columns. And we're going to right click on them. Set as X error. And set as Y error. OK. So this will be resistance error. It will also be in ohms. And we're going to have voltage error. And this will be in volts, right? So let's make that look a little prettier. Okay, so the voltage error, error like I said, these were measured in millivolts. Uh, and the, it actually goes to a tenth of a millivolt. So half of a tenth of a millivolt is actually 5 E negative 5. Um, I'm not going to explain the math. We'll take that corner and drag it down and it'll populate it with this. It can also populate it with a pattern like Excel does. So if you have one, two, three, and you drag it down, it should do four, five, six, seven. Uh, try it out. I'm not actually 100% sure. All right. And then these actually have an error which is 10 times worse. So, well, I might as well just type it in. All right. So that was easy. Now these have an error based on the value, and as far as I remember, it's just 5% of the value. So what we'll do is we'll type call A uh, in this function row, then times 0 0.05 for 5%. And you can see it automatically populates them, and then it gets this lock here, which says that you can't edit the cells. Uh, but you could if you deleted this equation. Let me see if I can edit it. No, it won't let me. All right, so these are protected. That's what this means. And I'm not going to mess with that right now. So we have everything we need for our uh, raw data. Now let's get our uh, columns for our theoretical curve. Okay, so I'm going to make two new columns. I'm going to do set as X. And you can see as soon as I do that, not only do these change, but these change. So this is X1, Y1, and then this is X2, Y2. So these are paired and these are paired. Um, so let's just set these as resistance 
values, distinct from resistance R2. And then this will be uh, voltage out. Uh, and I guess here we can say theoretical. Okay. All right. So for this one, uh, I mean, how all plotting is done on a computer is real numbers don't exist to computers. They might not even exist in real life. Uh, so we have to set a discrete set of values. So the way to do that here um, is to right click, fill column with a set of numbers. And we're going to want to span this whole resistance range. And you can see I already had this uh, from before. I set it from 0 to a million in increments of 0.1 and it should be okay and it, it'll take a little bit to load that but there you go so you can see it did indeed what we set it to do then we want a function of these x values now that we've populated the x now we just uh, calculate based on that what the y is um, if you remember from the voltage divider circuit uh, the voltage output is equal to the voltage input times uh, R2, which is actually the voltage, uh, which R2 is actually the resistor you're measuring the voltage across. So it's V0 equals VI times R2 over R1 plus R2. So our V in was 12. Our R2 in this case um, is our R2 theoretical so we're going to do call e divided by call e again and I put the parentheses there so we don't mess up uh, order of operations and then plus r1 in this case I had as a hundred thousand so that's one e5 all right and I press enter and it should start calculating uh, there you go Okay, so it did exactly that. Zero times zero is zero. I mean, zero <laughs> times 12 is zero. All right. So now we need to plot it, and then we need to prettify the plot. So let's start with the data. So it turns out that if I highlight all four of these, go to plot, symbol, scatter, it automatically puts the error bars, but they're kind of hidden behind this... Uh, crappy marker so what you want to do is right click on the marker hit plot details you can see the marker here I'm going to change that to a circle by hitting this drop down I'm going to change the size to 3 and when you hit apply we can just kind of look at it from the side and that looks a little better I mean you can't really see uh, I mean you, you can see them now at the very least they're kind of small but they're there uh, I can't really see the one there, but it's okay. It's better than nothing. So we're going to hit OK. And now what we want to do is superimpose our theory curve on top of this. So what we want to do is right click. Sorry, we'll probably have to right click here. Plot setup. And I already have all this stuff opened up but you'll probably start with something like this and you can see how I got all the new stuff I clicked on these double arrows right here so I click up once and then I'm going to click up twice and the reason why you need to do that is you need to click on your worksheet and then all of this stuff opens up and you can see that the long name is shown and our comments for theoretical are here and what we want to do is we want our resistance values to be X and our voltage out to be Y and then we're going to add that and it's going to take a bit because there's a lot of values and you can see it it does indeed uh, add it resistance value X voltage out values Y and it shows some of the parameters and all we're going to do is hit apply okay I, don't, I didn't even read that I should have and it's there, not how we want it, but it's there. So we're going to hit OK. We're going to right click 
on this. What is happening? Hold on. Gradient plot details again, and you can see it's here with this marker. So we're actually going to change this uh, to a line. And actually, if you're using line, you don't have to use as many points as I did, but I uh, just wanted to show, I don't know, I'm not going to make excuses, I had no reason for it. Okay, so we're clicked on here right now, and that's why we see this marker under preview as opposed to this one. So we want to change the plot type to line, so you just take the drop down and change it to line, you hit apply and you should get a pretty nice line. And now we can see both our theoretical curve and our data with the error bars, so that looks good. Okay, so we're going to hit OK. And now we need to prettify this. So one of the things we want to do is make a log scale. So the way to do that is you right click on the numbers and you can see they're highlighted and then we just hit scale. And we should get a dialog in a few seconds and here it is and you can see immediately uh, we have the horizontal the one we clicked on and then the type uh, here is linear we want to change that to log 10 we could do that but log 10 is usually what's used for circuits and you have to notice what's happening here from and to that's pretty far away that's like a million times as far away to the left as it is as this is from zero so we're going to just change that to one and apply that and you can see it changes and that's fine because our lowest resistance value is one anyway so it, it it doesn't look the best but you can play with that if you wanted to i can maybe just set it to point one for the hell of it let's see apply all right it looks it looks a little better so i'll leave it like that okay and what you notice uh, is that these tick marks are kind of what is this sorry auto saving uh, can't it'll be slow whatever okay what you notice is these tick marks change and they no longer are in even increments but in uh, tenfold increments. So 0.1 times 10 is 1 times 10 is 10, etc. Uh, and the tick marks kind of illustrate that it is in a log plot. So this is kind of the visual cue that you're looking at something in a log scale. And you can also see that the curvature of our uh, theory curve changed dramatically. Uh, but it still lines up with the um, experimental data. So we only need to do a few more things. So we're going to right click on the axes now and hit properties. Uh, one moment, this might not be correct. Okay, that's good actually. So you can see it says X axis layer one and we want to go to lines and ticks okay so we can see the options that we're trying to change we want the major and minor ticks in but first I want to go to top and say use same options for bottom and top so we'll do that and then we'll do that in in so let's hit apply just so we can see what it does and you can see that it does what we want. Now we're just going to do the same thing for left and right. So we'll go to right. We'll click this. Go to left. And hit in. And hit apply. And that was pretty easy. So now we have this nice little box. It shows the tick marks up here. Although I don't know why exactly you would want that. Uh, it is... I mean, it's just kind of hard to see considering all the values are here. So I guess if the values were up here, it would be nice. And then same thing here is you can, you don't have to bring your eye all the way to this side. You can just look right over here. Okay, so now let's change this. Um, actually, I like, I like this the way it is. It says theoretical is the line, voltage output is the dot. Um, if you wanted to change it, for whatever reason it likes to be a pain uh, I believe 
just like these other objects, we can just right click, go to properties. Correct. So let's see. I believe percent one means it's grabbing it from the first uh I actually don't know what the one reference is, but let's just change it to voltage output. And you can see it shows it under here. So let's just change it to then experiment uh, total voltage theoretical voltage. Okay, apply. And it should change, and that's nice. All right, look how fancy this looks. So we're done making it. The last thing to do is to export it. Um, I forgot where to right-click for this, but I did find before that if you hit Control G, you get this. So it's export graphs. Um, the default is encapsulated postscript. I don't know anything about that, but I do know something about PNG, so I'm going to change it to that. Um, the path can be changed, like where it's going to be safe, so click on these ellipses. And I'm just going to set it to my desktop, uh, to my D folder. So this just keeps my desktop clean so there isn't files all over the place, so I'll save it there. Um, yeah. I don't know what it's going to be named as, and I would like to see... Oh no, I can't press OK. OK, OK. I can drag this down and then drag this up. Alright, so we're going to hit Apply. Oh, so it's going to save it as Graph 1, and it's going to overwrite, overwrite the one I had before, which is OK. So we'll hit Yes. Uh, I'm saving. My little spinny wheel. It's not... Res oh, uh, uh, okay. So let's see if that completely failed or not. Um, one little thing to notice is that it says speed mode is on there, and that's because of the theory curve. But you can see that it's not here. Uh, let's maximize this. There you go. That looks really nice. It has a nice line going through all the points. The axes are clearly labeled. All the tick marks are in. I seem to have spelled voltage wrong and just caught it, but that's an easy fix uh, for you. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, but yeah, and then you can add this to your Word document or your LaTeX document. It's all done. Uh, so if you have any questions, comment, email, whatever you can't figure out, we can figure out together. And I hope you can figure this out on your own relatively easily. Have a good night.